In this video, I'm going to show you the interactivity uh, commandlets for PowerShell Universal Dashboard V3. These commandlets allow you to update a dashboard dynamically as users interact with it. Uh, you can kind of think of these commandlets similar to how you would expect uh, WinForms or a WPF application to work, where you click a button and then something updates on the page. So the first example that I'm going to show is how to get data. So inside my dashboard here, uh, you could also do this in Visual Studio Code, but I'm doing this directly in the admin console. I'm going to click edit and then I'll just paste some code that I've typed. So what this is doing is it's creating a new text box with the ID my text box. From there, I'm creating a button with the text get properties and an on click event handler that is going to uh, invoke the script block when it's clicked. It's going to call get UD element, which is going to get the actual uh, text box element here and store it in the element variable. From there, I'm going to show a toast message that is going to pretty much serialize that element to JSON so that we can look at all the properties that are available. So if I save this, since I have auto deploy on, it's going to automatically deploy and refresh my dashboard. If I go over to my dashboard now, you can see I have a text box and a button. So if I type in this uh, text box and click get properties, you'll see this toast pop up. And this contains uh, the serialized version of what I uh, pretty much got from get UD element. And you can see that it has a bunch of properties, it has like the ID, um, and it also has uh, the value, which is test. So if I wanted to actually access those properties um, a little uh, directly inside my event handler, uh, rather than serializing to JSON, what I can just do is modify this. And if I want to just get this text box value, for example, I could just type dot value because element is a hash table that contains all the properties of that particular element. So we'll save that, it's going to redeploy, and I can come over here, and now whatever I type in here is going to pop up inside my toast, so you can see it got the value. Next, let's look at setting element properties. So any uh, element on the page can actually have its properties updated using set UD element. So we're going to click edit, and I'm going to put some new script here. You can see I have the text box again, my text box. Uh, this time I have a button that, uh, with the text set properties and an on click event handler. In this case, we're calling set UD element. So what set UD element will do is actually update the element that we indicate inside the ID. It will then pass any properties down to that particular element uh, via this hash table. So you can see here that I'm passing a value um, and I will save that and we can see what that does. So now my page has reloaded and when I click set properties, you can see the value of the text box has updated. In addition to uh, setting specific properties of particular components, what you can also do is add content to a component. Some components uh, allow you to uh, add content. For example, new UD element, which allows you to create um, kind of any HTML element you'd like. Um, in this case, I'm uh, creating a div tag and it's going to be a container for other elements. I've given it the ID container and now I want to add child elements to it. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a new button that has the text add element and then in the on click event handler, I'm going to call add UD element with the parent ID container. Uh, add UD element has a content um, script block, which then I can add content to that div tag. So every time I click this, it's going to add a new typography to the inside of this particular container. So if you go here and click add element, you'll see that uh, this element was added. Uh, if I click add element again, it's going to add a new typography to that particular um, div tag. Uh, kind of the opposite of adding elements is uh, removing elements or clearing elements. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually edit this and add another button. Um, and in this case, this button is called clear element. And what this is going to do is call clear UD element and clear that container where we added all those items to that div tag. So if I save this, what it's going to actually do now is every time I click add element, it'll add a new element. But if I click clear element, it's going to clear the content of that div tag. So it kind of just empties it all out. So I can go ahead and add them again and then clear them again. Um, you can also clear or uh, remove uh, specific elements by using the remove UD element commandlet. So in this example, I have a div tag uh, with the element ID and the content hello. 
And then I just have a button where it's, uh, the text remove element and an on-click event handler that calls remove UD element specifying the ID of element. So this doesn't just clear the content, this will remove the uh, element completely. So if we load the page up now, you'll see that that div tag is uh, there. And if I click remove element, it's actually going to remove that element from the page. Uh, the last and one of the more common use cases is actually updating elements. Uh, so in this example, I actually have a new UD dynamic being used here. So a new UD dynamic pretty much will allow you to refresh a region of a dashboard um, using sync UD element. So new UD dynamic accepts an ID. So in this case, we're calling it time. And then we're creating a new typography in it that's going to uh, pretty much output the current date and time. Then I have a button called refresh element. And when I click it, it's going to call sync UD element on new UD dynamic. What that's going to do is it's going to cause new UD, UD dynamic to reload this script block again and uh, display a new date time. So I'm going to save that. And it's going to refresh my page. And now you can see here's the current time. If I just wait a couple seconds and then click refresh, you'll see the time updates. Um, that's because we're calling sync UD element, which is causing this dynamic section to reload itself. So in this video, we went over the interactivity components of PowerShell Universal Dashboard V3, which is part of PowerShell Universal.